Note tasting is an excellent exercise for accuracy. Some people even call it target practice. But Carmine taught it to me many years ago, and he called it note tasting. And the taste of a note is an interesting concept. It's a very right-brained concept. It's what it looks like on the page, so you can picture it visually. I'd like you to see it as you're playing it, whether you're looking at music or not. It's the sound of it. What does it sound like before you play it? It's the timing of it. Where's the timing for the setup so it comes out exactly where you want it to go? Any sensation that you can bring in from your senses will keep note tasting in a right-brained state. And therefore, your accuracy will improve without trying not to miss. So many people use their brains and their willpower and their might to be accurate. And of course, it's the bane of our existence as horn players to stay accurate. I have found note tasting to be one of the most effective exercises for accuracy. So effective that I used to practice it before every single performance. You'd catch me in the med pit doing note tasting every night. And there's many different variations for note tasting. I'd like to show you a few of them. And I believe we worked on note tasting, correct? We have. Good. Would you like to show us um, your first variation of note tasting? Sure. First, you're going to do our usual ready, set, play by setting up your timing and subdivision. Subdivision for this in the rest is a guarantee. It's like taking out an insurance policy on accuracy. Be ready early. Sixteenths are ready. Subdivide carefully. See the note in your mind's eye before you play it. See them all and hear it and time it. Now picture the next G on the top of the staff, hear it and time it. Awesome. Now let's go to variation one. I'd like you to do the very same exercise with the same visual. I want you to see the note in your mind's eye because wasn't that amazing when you did that? It was very helpful. Yeah. Again, it takes your mind off of the mechanics and more into what we're calling the taste of the note, mm. which is a lot of right brain sensation. So this time, I want you to leave the mouthpiece on again, but I'd like you to use the tongue for the beginning of every note. Okay. Otherwise, everything remains exactly the same. See it, hear it, feel it. Same ear for slurred and tongue.
can see in your concentration how focused you are. Where is your focus? Well, I'm seeing a visual of where the note would be on the page. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing the pitch that I want to come out the instrument. Mm -hmm. And I'm subdividing. Awesome. See what I mean by an insurance policy on yeah. accuracy? It keeps you busy. There's no room or time to think about your chops when you're doing those things. Correct. Not only that, but it's focusing on the right things. Yeah. So that, again, your reflex training how to attack a note without how to attack a note. Right? Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting, magical concept. I love note tasting. So let's now go to the next variation. Okay. This time I want you to take the mouthpiece off and the two beats rest. We're going to do the same order, breath attack first. Okay. <laughs> See and feel it. It's the same concentration as before. Beautiful. timing will get it accurate. Diligent subdivision. Uh, don't get your concentration waver. Stay right on track. You know where to go. Good job. Thank you. Very good job. And now we have our next variation where you take it off in between and you tongue the note. Exactly the same rules apply. The timing is so essential. That's your focus. If you stay right there and yet da 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 play and you can see it and hear it, it'll be there. Okay. Precision timing. There you go. Beautiful. How was that for you, Alex? It was challenging to keep my mind in the right place. And the right place is, tell us one more time. Feeling the time, especially Central. subdividing right up until the moment you hear the sound coming out the bell. It's easy to get distracted in those final moments before something's supposed to happen. And where would you go in those final moments? What are your other options? Oh, well, one option is man, I really hope this note comes out. Yeah, we've all been there <laughs> almost on a daily basis. Um, another option is maybe noticing what's happening in your belly or in your chops or trying uh -huh. to consciously 
yeah. set something to get the right note. Right. That wasn't a successful option mm -hmm. for me. Um, and then I found the right place to go. Oh, another option was hearing it and seeing it so much that I forgot to subdivide. Mm -hmm. And that didn't work so well for me. Mm -hmm. But when I found the right combination of hearing it, seeing it, and remembering to subdivide, it came out almost as if I weren't playing the horn. Yeah, and it sounded that way. It's so cool, isn't it? It's great. It's a bit of a miraculous exercise. Again, I call it my insurance policy with accuracy. Because if you can get all of those elements in the same place at the same time and just let it happen, it's like you let it go. It's about being in the process, not the result. Quite zen. Indeed. Yeah. One thing I want to mention is that Carmine's book for which he based a lot of his method was Zen in the Art of Archery by Eugene Herigl. Oh, I've read it. Does it make sense to you now? It does. Doesn't he actually hit bullseyes blindfolded? Yeah, he does. Would you consider this exercise to be <laughs> very similar to that? It does feel blindfolded. You right. really have to trust that it's going to come out. Trust. Trust the process. And when you do that, it works like magic. Can't say enough good things about it. Any questions about note tasting? How do you practice note tasting? Do you do every variation every day? I usually choose one variation. However, it's really fun when I'm teaching it to a student to mix it up. And I give them commands at the last possible second. Take it off, put it on, breath attack, use your tongue, so that they have no time to plan or think about it, that it's all reflexively trained. They have to be in very much autopilot with the timing, the seeing, and the hearing. So that's a fun activity you could do with a partner, just like the arpeggios down. Yes, exactly. It's something you can ask of a friend, and they can keep you honest. Because when you do it for yourself, you might get a little too easygoing. So you want to stay very much strictly in the process. This way you treat your playing in a sports-like manner of reflexive training. And your body will learn to respond without thought and just a reflex. And that is the beauty of the Carmine Caruso method as it has served me since I was 13 years old.